You are looking at automated robotic arm in Carol Space program. With one single button press, robotic arm undocks station module, rotates module into axis and redock it to radial position. This single button also trigger rotating hazard lights and this light automatically shut down by the end of the procedure. Nice. The root of idea is based on the robotic arms on Mir Space Station. And in this video, I show how to create similar robotic arm in Kerbal Space Program. We are all used to the huge Canada arm on International Space Station. And even Mir Space Station had its own small robotic arms. Robotic arms were totally automatic and allowed Mir Space Station to go through 10 different configurations with only 4 movable modules. There were a total of 4 robotic arms and Russians nicknamed them LAPA, which is literally PO in English. Majority of Mir modules made automated docking to the forward-facing port. And since there is only one forward-facing port, modules were moved by integrated robotic arms to the radial ports. Crystal module in particular was repositioned total of 5 times. This module was designed as the literal 20-ton docking adapter for Buran. For example, pressurized mating adapter on ISS weighs 16 times less. US Space Shuttle have used Crystal as docking adapter one single time during STS-71, and for the next 8 Mir missions, US Space Shuttle used docking module extension mated with Crystal in radial position. Otherwise, Crystal would have been moved total of 19 times during its career, which is a bit of an impossible task, considering the resource of robotic LAPA stated as only 7 redocking procedures. If you ever done robotic arm in KSP, you know the pain. Manually operating said robotic arm is literal nightmare. So I want to create something better. I want to have docking system that can reposition module automatically with one single press of a button. And another requirement is ability to move module back to the forward port with the same button. And blinking lights is just a cherry on top. And since I'm just bored, I would be launching the space station from the EFC level. So without further ado, let's check internals of the whole system. Alright, the station would consist from 6 modules. One 5 directional node would house 4 modules and another 3 directional node would use automated arm to mount some equipment. All parts are stock KSP. Nevertheless, I am using restock modification so parts look just a bit different. Another important step is to make sure that you have advanced vehicles enabled in the game options. We have one core module with active system, while four connected modules would be passive. This is opposite of what was done on Mir Space Station, but it is easier from gameplay standpoint to do action groups and call controllers on one single module. So we are launching brains of the system with the first module. And core of robotic arm is one hinge and one server. And yes, it is all you need to make movement in two axes. With hinge you need to make 90 degree turn, and with servo you need to rotate module 180 degrees. Where it becomes a bit more challenging is when you need to make a backward movement. And to do this, we need to unlock full rotation of servo. And here you can notice that rotation starts at 177 degrees. So it is not full 360 degree rotation, and we need to make a number a bit more precise. So fixing it at negative 90 to positive 90 degrees would make a trick. We need 180 degrees of movement and this is exactly what we are making. And this way, when you attach your docking port, it would be aligned and not at a wonky angle of minus 3 or plus 3. Another thing with the docking ports is that they will never snap perfectly when you move the second port from the angle. I have tried to eliminate angle with the third component with the hydraulic lift, but third joint just add more wobbliness to a system and module will still dock a bit off, so simpler is just better. Obvious elephant in the room is dual docking system. And this is the simplest way to guarantee near perfect alignment that we will need for the automated system. So, how to make it work with one single button? Well, action groups is all you need for the robotic arm automation. Make sure that your hinge and servo are both unlocked. Put toggles for both of them into the action group. Then to make the whole thing to move around, you need to trigger node undock for the forward port. And to make the whole system functional in backwards direction, you just put node undock for radial port in the same action group. Also another thing that I noticed during live testing is that sometimes you need also to trigger undock node on the movable module as well. Uh, this is not 100% necessity, but most of the time you still want to put this undock node here as well. Easiest way to align radial nodes is to put hinge and servo in 4-way symmetry. But once you start to assign in action groups, you will assign the whole symmetry group. To avoid this and assign different action groups for different robotic arms well, with different buttons, 
Just remove symmetry from every single hinge and servo after initial 4-way alignment. To align the whole system I just make one single standard passive joint. I align it first to the frontal position, then copy it to the radial position, move the hinge and check the alignment, make adjustments if necessary and then rinse and repeat until I have standard joint that works in every single position. And well, after that I do everything else. So first you are making your standard joint that works in every single position, then you remove your four-way symmetry, then you are setting up your action groups and after that you build your modules. So this is pretty much your robotic arms. Uh, there will be several important caveats about operating the whole system, but this will be explained a bit more later once I launch the station into the orbit. Next part is the rotating blinking disc servo, whatever hazard lights. For this I am actually using CAL controller and also like CAL controller is small indicator where I have my first and last module, so I am not lost when I am starting to mash buttons. Uh, also another idea is just to import flux with numbers and use them as your action group indicators, also kind of the way. And with the lights it's a bit tricky. First you need to slow down the play speed to match the speed of your redocking procedures, so your CAL controller is not playing at 100%, it's playing more at like 5-10%. to 10%. And also there is no way to turn the lights on and off with the CAL controller, so this is kind of a pain and here is a workaround. Uh, first you are keeping the light constantly on and remove it from your light section group. Then you place R, G and B options into the CAL controller and this way you can bring back one of the light spectrums back into the visual mix. Uh, for the rotation functionality you just make a simple sinusoid on your angle graph and this is pretty simple, uh, depends on your play speed and well amount of wobbly wobbly things you put there. Now with 4 graphs you just put CAL controller into every single action group that you want and with action group you need to trigger play of the CAL controller and you need to trigger reverse. To trigger reverse first you need to place CAL controller into a fully played position so it actually reverse and not just stops. And with this reverse functionality CAL controller will repeat blinking lights every time you press your action group so it goes back and forth, back and forth and this is why you have your light cut off at both ends. And this is it for the light setup. And now let's actually launch the whole station and see how it works. And I know for sure when you launch things in KSP, they never tend to work from the first try. So let's check it out. And straight out of the gate you can notice that I'm launching the station from the EFC level. And this posed some extra challenge. You can notice the humongous amount of engines on the first stage and yeah, there are like 19 extra engines there. And actually they burn for less than a minute. Rocket goes straight up since EVE atmosphere is just super dense at sea level. Second stage, it actually lag behind and even lose some speed at first, but once high enough it start to overcome the resistance. Another thing with EVE is not to overdo your acceleration or you can just burn up from overheat. At 15 km you are pretty much at the same pressure like Kelvin C level, so if you made it to 15 km at EVE, you are pretty much started your ascent at Kelvin. And around this point you can like slowly pitch several degrees to start like a resemblance of gravity turn, like tiny tiny teeny teeny angle, but even then like just don't do a proper gravity turn because EVE will just punish you and will burn you up or slow you down, yeah, just small tiny tiny teeny angle. And the whole purpose of the second stage is to put craft into a high suborbital trajectory, preferably out of atmosphere. And the first stage is the place where magic happens. It should be quite performed both in TVR and Delta V departments. And for the first launch I am actually using four stages with the core station module being the last one. And this is due to the moderate weight, every single other module would be lighter. And the first stage can use something lower, like with lower TVR than 7 iron spikes, probably like 2 volt gunks. After initial injection I just do circularization burn and then change inclination to equatorial and this way I can fix any mistakes and simplify the nature of rendezvous and docking. Second and third launch are slightly altered launch systems. First stage is the same, second stage housed the same four vector engines paired with six aerospike engines, but for the first stage I am using two Wolfgangs and there is more than enough. They are not as high in TBR as like seven aerospikes, but they have better ISP and they weigh a bit less. After swapping to the first stage rocket can simply follow up to the Prograde SAS settings and rendezvous is pretty standard and simple, just put craft into lower or higher orbit and wait for transfer window. 
Once you are in acceptable range, just kill off relative velocity and then burn target. Then kill off relative velocity once again with retrograde burn and rinse and repeat until you are in the docking range. Uh, for the whole stack I am using rather interesting RCS configuration. I do not put RCS on the station itself uh, and this way I can actually lower the overall part count and increase my performance. But if you place RCS only at the third stage, then your craft is kinda unbalanced and doing precise docking with that is kinda unadvisable. And to avoid this, I just slap some steel beams alongside of the station module and just shift the center of RCS thrust closer to actual center of mass. After successful docking, third stage just slides off and you are left with nice and pristine modules without excessive RCS system all over the place. And well, first automatic docking was rather wobbly, yeah, obviously you need to engage SAS, like, duh, and even when you use a MacJab with like better SAS, which is smart ass, you can fail sometimes, so yeah, just experiment around. Every station, every SAS configuration can interact differently, and something works, something not, just try and do something awesome. Also, the speed of hinges is quite important, since, well, inertia is a pain, and it is as painful in real life as it is in KSP. For example, mirror lap arm, it was redocking for like whopping 60 minutes, and it is while having like uh, the whole station attitude control system dumping in the excessive inertia. So, yeah, it's not so simple. Also, I prefer to finish hinge movement first and only then rotate module in place. Actually kind of similar to the mirror lapa arms, because at first they were kind of dumb, they moved only in one axis, then another axis, uh, but then when they started to redock crystal module, uh, it kind of wanted to hit other solar panels, so to avoid that they needed to patch the bloody thing to move into axes at the same time. And when you finish your rotation into the place and dock your module, uh, you'll see that there is small disalignment there, and you can fix that by just simply undocking the smaller docking port, but then you will have uh, ability to actually move it back, so it's kind of trade-off, and to fix everything visual, you can actually use your built-in rotation feature into the docking ports for those like small, small, tiny, teeny corrections. And if you think uh, that it will get better from the second try, no! <laughs> the second module is where I just started to fail with like, the whole system. And it was actually unclear for me why it actually fails. Uh, here you can see several tries where I like totally fail. Uh, once I undock, module just snaps instantly to like 30 degrees. Uh, so I just decided to jam with the issue and just troubleshoot it a bit later. You know, like, early access, you know, like, nothing to worry about, come on, move along, move along, we'll patch it later. And in the end, rotation zero angle was way off, and I was unable to finish the rotation. And built-in docking port rotation feature, it's only allowed for, like, 15 degrees of movement, so total of 30 degrees when you account for two modules, and it's kinda not enough, so I increased the docking acquire force to 200%, crossed my fingers, undock small secondary node, and... This worked like a charm, the whole module snapped into the place. Although it was at a bizarre angle, so I need to fix it later. Launch number 4 was something a bit simpler. I was pretty unsure why the whole system is like dysfunctional, so I just launched something easier, and that was a rare module with some equipment already pre-attached. And also, let's address the elephant in the room. I'm launching from EVE Space Center, and this is like some sort of the black magic. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, here is the mod list that I used while creating this video. A uh, pretty simple setup with Spectra, Scatter, and Waterfall as main visual enhancements. And you can notice that this build is also using Copernicus. And this is really important for the EVE launch. EVE launch facility is provided by Arian Space Programs modifications. It is actually a manual install, so make sure that you follow instruction, otherwise it can be a dud. So, just install everything from the scan list, then launch the game to initiate your Copernicus, and then manually install Alien Space Programs and set up your launch location. So, simple as that, here I need to write something to transition to gameplay, but whatever, here we go. After orbital injection and docking, it was time to unfold communication array, and think worked like a charm. Honestly, I'm just in love with this system. I remember making the Skylab replica like five years ago, 
And it was treating the telescope array as separate craft, so it's undocked from the station. Used RCS to reposition itself and docked back to a station. Over here, you just deploy everything from one slick fairing, and then you press one button, bada bing, bada boom, and you are done. Your payload is deployed. This is as simple as pressing this one single button to subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Launch number 5 was first crew of the space station, and it came with some cargo to fix this alignment of the third module. The same launch system, only instead of the fairing it have command module and cargo bay with a payload. Dock spacecraft to the rare port of the station and deploy the payload. And the payload is rather simple, cute and small RCS tag. 3 monoprobe tanks, probe core, battery, 2 RTGs and 4 RCS thrusters. For connection it have small docking port on the one side and grabby grabby tiny 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 finger on the other side. Maneuvered into the position, made grabby grabby thing with the station module, undocked the module, made my adjustments and finally redocked the whole thing at a proper angle. Two final launches were with the same system, nothing out of the ordinary. But interesting part is the investigation part. What actually makes the system to fail? So, I am not locking my hinges or rotation servers. This was the decision to simplify the operations. Only issue is when you load the craft, it tends to reset hinges and servers into the default angle. And this one is not one you actually put there, this is like opposite of that. And I noticed that and just locked the hinge. But after docking the fifth module, it still snapped 30 degrees. I have noticed that server is rotated not at 90 degrees, but instead it was at 70 degree angle after locking. Here, where I just brain farted for quite a lot of time, my theory was that I made a mistake in construction and did not remove symmetry from small docking ports, and I went as far as considering to edit the save files to fix the angle, then I just realized that server is just too slow. So when the system reset itself, server reset it as well as the hinge. But it just had not enough time to get back into the proper angle. Hence the issue. With that key piece of information, I just used my grabby grabby station companion and reset module angle. Double checked all the angles and properly docked to the station. And it was time to finally test the system. And it was absolute success. Went as far as even playing back and forth with the whole system. Yeah, just make sure that you lock your hinges and servers before initial docking or things can go sideways. And from here it was time to dock the final module and make some small adjustments to a speed of the hinge and server and enjoy the show. So here's the final result of fully automated robotic arm. So, one single button press, trigger module undock, rotation into axis and dock it to the radial node. Same button trigger rotating hazard lights and with the same button you can move module back into the original position. Also, I just realized that uh, my crew escape vehicle have no heat shield or parachutes. Oh uh, yeah, that's kind of an oopsie. So, I hope you are taking better care of your kerbals and pack some parachutes. Until the next time, have a nice one, and Yakis out. But there is more. Crystal module in particular was repositioned total of five times. This module was designed as literal 20 don 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 don